With just five games to go in the Norwegian Premier Division season, isn't it heartening to see the club that sacked you fighting it out for their first ever league title and one of the players you developed as top scorer in the division? Am I coming across as bitter? Not at all. I, for one, am delighted for them and will honestly be cheering them on during the title running. But we're no longer concerned with developing Norwegian youth players anymore. We've moved on to France and we've got our own job to do. In today's episode, we're going to catch you up on how things have gone in our first 10 games of the season. Are we on our way to finding FM21 redemption? So whilst Trump, Stalin are out there, fingers crossed, imploding in Norway so I don't end up looking like an even bigger fool than I already do, things are going okay for us out in France. Ten games into the season, seven wins. We've been playing all right. In that last episode, we opened our campaign with a 3-1 victory over Niort. Well, in the next game, we recorded the same scoreline. Two more goals for Al Blushi. That was four in two games for him. And our young right winger on loan from PSG, Maciek Carvot, got his first goals for the club as well. We then beat Dunkirk 2-0 before our first little bump in the road. We were winning 1-0 deep into stoppage time when substitute Infamari BA came onto the pitch, tore his way into the area, hacked down one of their players and they got a penalty in the 93rd minute to steal two points from us. We bounced back. We beat Nancy 3-1. Salah El Belushi got another brace, six for the season for him, before our best performance of the season where we won 4-0 and Lasana Barr got two goals and he has had a rather encouraging start to the season as well, but a little injury is going to keep him out of our game in today's episode. And then we had our first defeat of the season. We were playing Sosho, one of the other big teams much fancied in this division, how we conspired to lose this game, I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. We had an XG of over two. We had plenty of shots, but didn't hit the target with enough of them. And they had a 92nd minute goal that denied us a point. We then bounced back, though. A 2-1 victory in our next game against Ajaccio Albalushi on the score sheet with his fellow forward. But before another defeat this time... We were playing Brest again. We lost 1-0, struggling to break down these slightly bigger teams in the division. We dominated the XG. We restricted them to just a few shots, but they scored from a free kick, and we lost once more. We did bounce back again, and I guess the two defeats that we've had so far, we've bounced back and won the next game after them. We went to Parry FC, and this time we won 2-0, but on the score sheet, and then Anthony Vincent as well. All of which leaves us, pleasingly, top of the table. We've lost that lead a couple of times when we've been defeated in the league. But we've climbed our way back to the summit. But it's pretty congested up there. Today we're going to be playing Valenciennes who are in fourth place. If we lose, we're actually going to go below them in the table. In fact, if we lose today's game, we could drop as low as fifth in the league. So... Things are going great, but there's a lot of work still to do, and we have got a very stretched squad. So we are suffering a couple of problems in our squad. The first is with morale. The players that want to leave the club, while well, their morale is absolutely on the floor. Infamari BA, he wants to move. Guess what? It's Milan that are interested this time. But his morale will just not pick up. Neither will Anthony Vincent. Neither will Patrick Dubois. And of the players that are missing, Lasana Bar is also on his knees in terms of his morale because they're not being allowed to move to bigger clubs. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is just in terms of the size of the squad. The players that we have on the bench are really not players as good as who they might come on to replace. But it's not even like we've got a great deal of numbers, never mind quality depth. We bought in a couple of other players on transfer deadline day. One of them was a loan signing. He's really not looked that impressive so far as he tries to learn the right wing back position. His attributes look pretty good. His performances have stunk to high heaven so far. We also bought in 
a new player that's going to play as a midfielder or as a centre-back for us. This is Raphael Gosselin. Again, he's not the greatest player you've ever seen, but he's only 19. Importantly, his morale is not too bad, whereas players like Patrick Dubois, who really are much better and should be playing as our starting centre-half, their performances are absolute dog muck at the moment because they just do not want to be here. Who are the shining lights so far, I hear you cry well. Bruno Nicola, the goalkeeper we bought in on loan from PSG, has been superb. What a difference having a quality goalkeeper between the sticks makes. And in front of him, some decent performances as well. Garin has been okay, but the star of our defensive line has got to be Gafaru Mensa, only 18 years old. He's doing very well in training and his performance is out there on the pitch. Well, they have been majestic as well. He could go and play over at left wing back, but we do not need him out there at all because another player that's done very well is Didier Gioria. He has got four assists now in his 10 games from left wing back and he looks pretty threatening every time he's raiding forward. The other stars, well, Lusana Bar has played pretty well. He'll be injured today, so we won't get to see him. But Salim Chan, who when we first arrived at the club, could not play in central midfield at all, has learned that position very, very quickly. And as a box-to-box -box midfielder, well, goodness, he has looked pretty useful as well. Going forward, well, our two best wide players are not going to be available today. Machek Carvot seems to play a couple of games, then pick up a niggle, and he's out for a week or two. He's been out for two weeks already. He's still out for a couple more days. So it means that we're going to be playing Anthony Vincent, who has got good attributes, but with his unhappiness at not being able to leave, and his unhappiness that he's at a club that got relegated last season, he's really not putting in great performances for us. And then over on the left, that injury to Bar means that we're going to have to bring in David Labate, the Italian who started his career at Dover. Again, in terms of his crossing and his finishing, he's not great. We're basically asking him to go and fill in out there today because we don't really have quality replacements. The player that could come in is Gilan Roussel, who is terrible in training, is a natural out there, but tribute-wise, he's nothing special either. So we're going to try and play BA today, even though he is a grumpy little individual. And we're going to see whether maybe he can just scurry about and give us a performance today. Labate can fill in over on the left and we'll try and get ourselves a victory. If we could win it, it would be a big one. But already I think we are just hanging in there until the transfer window opens and we can go out there and make some signings to bolster our squad. <laughs> We are the away team for today's game, but we're in our violet shirts. This is going to be a tough game. This is a good outfit we're playing. Could have brought you back for a much easier tie than this. But I'd rather come back and show you a defeat against a tough team fighting for promotion with us than come back and show you a walkover against a team that's struggling for relegation. So we shall see how we get on. In our games, we've looked relatively compact. The back three system... I'm quite a convert to. It's been working quite nicely. However, going forward, it has struggled to break teams down on occasion. But today, well, within two minutes, it's that box-to-box -box midfielder, Salim Chan, who's dashed into the box, nodded one past their keeper. I missed the assist. Is it Gioria again, our raiding left-back? It is, you know. He has slung in his fifth assist. In, what, 10 games and 2 minutes? He's been a good little acquisition for us. Good start to the game. That will keep us top of the table if we can maintain it. We've actually made a pretty impressive start, haven't we? Four shots, two on target. An XG of 0.3 already. Not too bad a performance. I feel like second goal before half time might just put us in the box seat. But you can see from where they are in the table... Valenciennes are a good old team. The two teams that we've lost to this season, they're right up there as well. Brest are a good team. Sochaux 
are a team that have been in Liga on plenty of times over the last 20 years. So we are slugging it out with some pretty decent opposition. And now we've got the ball with Chan again. He's got it out to this right wing back who we're not too sure about. Kergustian has not really impressed since we bought him in, but at least he is an extra body. And that is... Oh. Deep breaths. Count to ten. This is the most frustrating player I've encountered so far in our time in France. He's our most talented player. I've bought him on. He's given away a penalty. He's usually away with the Senegal national team. Today, he's got himself sent off inside the first half. Okay, we're going to have to take a little look at our formation, I think. We'll see if we can nurse this through to half time. Okay, not ideal that one. We've tried to prop the team up until half time by stringing three central midfielders across the park and removing both of the wide players. It's got us through to half time okay. Whether it's going to be enough to see us all the way through to the final whistle with our one goal lead intact is anybody's guess. We're going to try and rally the troops. We'll see you back out there for a crucial second half where we've only got 10 men to fight our cause. <laughs> Okay, we are back underway. I think the other thing we need to mention, by the way, is our poll from the last episode. We asked you whether we should change our transfer philosophy so that we were also going to try and sign former players that we bought through at Trump's Darlin as our mate, by the way. The thinking man's emperor, El Belushi, heads us into a two-goal lead from a corner. Well, the result of that poll... Pretty conclusive. You lot are still pining for some of those Trump's darling youngsters. It's not enough that we've continued their save so you can find out how they develop. You also want to watch them develop in our episode. So we will see whether we can go away and sign any of those players. I'm thinking of selling this BA, by the way, if Milan come in and make an offer, which might give us the cash that might mean that we can maneuver a little bit in the transfer market. We've got 66 minutes on the clock. Time some fresh legs. We'll see you back out there for the end of the game. So, of course, the player that I praised in our defence before the game, Mensa, he was pulling a 6.3 and was looking a little bit tired. So, we've taken him off. And we've got a free kick that Salim Chan is standing over. And he has clipped the outside of the post with his little effort. And we're back into the highlights pretty quickly. We've thumped the ball forward and given it straight to Valenciennes. And I think we've got a little bit of defending to do. If we concede a goal now, it's going to be a nervous last 15 minutes or so. Tony Vincent on a booking. Steams in and wins the challenge. Maybe we need to look at getting him off the pitch as well. The Barte's won the ball though. He's thumped it forward. And here is our mate Al Belushi. Maybe we might be able to counter attack on them. Can he get a ball over? Is this right back that we're not convinced about. Can he finally do something good? No. That's pretty much as good as he can muster since he joined the club. His mate over at left wing back though has been much more convincing. And he fires an effort over the bar. You can see we don't have an awful lot on the bench that we can play with. I guess we could look at moving Gosselin into midfield rather than Vincent. Because Vincent is looking like he could be our second sending off of the game. And we'll chance our arm by bringing on little Paddy Dubois. I'm not sure Gosselin is going to be a playmaker. Maybe Chan might be better in that role. Let's see if we can see through these final 15 minutes. I reckon at 85, by the way, we won't be too embarrassed to lower the tempo and put on a little bit of time wasting. In fact, we've reached that little milestone. So let's bring the tempo right down. Get a little bit of time wasting on as well. Maybe even play for some set pieces. And see if we can just coast our way in to full time. Having scored two pretty decent goals. And got ourselves a win away from home against a promotion rival. When we've been down to 10 men because of the hot-headedness of a player that has got no interest in playing for us whatsoever. We're on, what, 92? Coming up to 93 minutes. This has got to be the end of the game. They've given us a little scare right on the final whistle. Should be enough to see us through. We've done it. 
We've got ourselves a 2-0 victory. When you're a man down after 36 minutes, well, that's the kind of result that you don't always think you're going to go on and get. We're very happy with the way that we've played. And I think we're also going to be very happy with how the table is looking. So it's pretty tight, as you can see. we got Trois up there on 24 points. We've got Brest, Guangom, Auxerre and Valenciennes all gathering up behind us. It's going to be a frantic little season, I think. It's time to go away again, play a few more games. It's looking good so far, but we know we're a long way from FM21 Redemption yet.